A quick note, this review is only for the PC version of Pal World that's available through Steam. Later this week, we'll have a separate review of the version available on Xbox and through the Microsoft Store on PC, which is the version you get access to with Game Pass, as that one is currently on an older build with significantly more issues that make it a genuinely different experience. But for now, on with the Steam review. Nothing about what Pal World does seems like it should work. A thinly veiled Pokemon clone where you do this to its adorable monsters? A base building survival game where you use your kidnapped creatures as laborers and may even resort to eating them when times get tough? An open world co-op adventure where you and your friends do this to harvest leather? Defying the odds, this wholly irreverent, gun-toting take on the creature collection genre has been unrelentingly fun across the 100 plus hours I've spent shooting cartoon kittens in the face. As an early access game, it's got plenty of bugs and performance issues, and sure, it shamelessly cribs the design for many of its collectible creatures. But its survival mechanics are intuitive and deep, its action-packed combat is silly and satisfying, and exploring its world in search of new pals to kick the snot out of hasn't come close to getting old. Despite the clear, eyebrow-raising inspiration it takes from a certain creature-collecting powerhouse, Pal World more closely resembles a formulaic survival game like Grounded, with a roster of lovable monsters to capture as a clever twist on that formula. You find yourself inexplicably dropped into the wilderness of a strange land filled with oversized, dangerous beasts called pals. From there, you'll need to build a base, hilariously force the local fauna into your servitude, and upgrade your gear. Wow. You won't find yourself hanging out in idyllic towns or challenging gym leaders to friendly contests. This isn't that kind of adventure. Instead, your goal is to survive the harsh land and face off against psychotic pal trainers who raise villages, attack your base, and command foreboding towers and dungeons filled with goons who shoot to kill. And yeah, Tonally, that's an utterly unhinged combination. One moment, I was taking in pastoral views as I explored for new pals. The next, I was firing guns at armed thugs and considering the possibility of butchering a pal who had been mentally broken by the poor working conditions of my sweatshop in order to avoid starvation. Rather than not addressing the questionable aspects of the creature collecting genre, Pal World amusingly leans into them and lets you do absurd things like pick up your fiery fox pal and use it as a flamethrower to burn your enemies to a crisp. Or equip your monkey pal with a machine gun. I mean, it sure beats Tail Whip. Once you get over how incredibly weird that all feels, it's a complete blast. Catching pals out in the open world is a ton of fun, though it's definitely a bit weird to hack a small penguin unconscious with an axe before you can stuff it into a pal sphere. Or, even more alarmingly, do this. Oh no, that penguin got ice capped. It feels extremely wrong at first, to be sure, but I found myself disturbingly used to the ritual after just a few hours. I mean, is doing the dirty work myself really all that different from battling them with another captured creature instead? The pals themselves, on the other hand, aren't quite as original as the process of catching them, as I described the majority of them as almost copyright infringement. Seriously, just look at them. Oh, someone's gonna get sued. Someone's gonna get sued. That said, uninspired and derivative as they are, the designs are still mostly pretty neat and have a lot of personality, which makes each one a ton of fun to hunt and do battle against. I'm especially fond of this completely helpless blob. Aw, the poor guy's trying his best.
Though capturing, leveling up, and fighting alongside pals is a major and awesome part of the adventure, you'll likely spend much more time hanging out at the various bases you'll build. Just like most other survival games, you'll need to keep a steady stream of crafting materials flowing in, like wood, stone, and food. And the key to automating that process so you don't spend endless hours mind-numbingly chopping down trees and swatting rocks with a pickaxe is by making clever use of the pals themselves. For example, farming could soak up lots of your time as you plant seeds, water your plots, and then harvest the crops. But once you've captured some pals and put them to work at your base, you can have them do it all for you. This PAL-based cooperation is not only ridiculously adorable to watch, but gives you even more reasons to catch every creature you find. You might not have much use for the fox-like PAL fox sparks in battle, but if you keep one at your base whenever you fire up the grill to cook or use the furnace to smelt some ingots, your charming fire friend will come running to make the task go by faster. Even the weakest creatures give you a whole new reason to catch not just one of them, but a whole bunch to put to work. As you level up your character and capture pals with different abilities, you'll be able to transform your bases from shabby camps to industrialized fortresses, complete with conveyor belts for your pals to go to work assembling weapons and ammo for you to use against enemies. A hilarious transformation that made me question how much better I was than the villainous rival trainers I faced out in the wilds. Getting away from the base to explore the absolutely enormous map and look for hidden chests and eggs, battle dangerous boss pals, raid dungeons stuffed with loot, or chat with a handful of NPCs and vendors scattered throughout the wilderness is consistently fun. In one area, I got chased by these guys. In another, I found a creepy black market trader who sold rare, probably illicitly obtained pals. And in another, I watched a squad of suicidal toucan pals rush into a camp of poachers and self-detonate. Ouch! Once you unlock the ability to ride pals, especially flying ones, the world really opens up. There's miles and miles to explore, from bamboo forests filled with goofy panda pals to murky swamps overrun with goblin pals. There's even an active volcano to be scaled, where all the pals are, predictably, made of fire. Crafting gear and leveling your pal squad to survive increasingly unwelcoming parts of the world is rewarding, not just because of all the interesting new pals to find and capture, but because certain biomes will give you access to materials you'll need to bring your base and equipment to the next level. Even cooler, there are always at least a few massive spires rising in the distance, serving as a reference for your ultimate goal, to reach them all and challenge the lethal bosses lurking within. Like most survival games, everything PAL World offers immediately becomes more fun when joined by friends in multiplayer. Up to 32 people can be in a single server on the Steam version, though that number is currently capped to a paltry four on Xbox and through the Microsoft Store. Running wild throughout the open world, taking down powerful bosses together, and managing a collective base all work without hassle. And co-op also alleviates some of the stress of having to grind for resources all the time, if those friends are willing to chip in and not steal all your stuff, that is. It probably goes without saying for an early access game, but be warned that you are bound to encounter technical issues and bugs on occasion. These issues I've seen are fortunately mostly minor so far, but I have been hit with rough frame rates and stuttering, hard crashes, and multiplayer disconnects, though none of that was so commonplace or game-breaking that it ever significantly got in the way of good times. There's a lot more that PAL World could benefit from, like a fleshed-out story, more NPCs, or adding evolutions for the PALs to avoid so many of them becoming irrelevant at higher levels. But I'm surprised by how polished the whole package already feels at this early stage. Even in its early access state, PAL World is amusingly irreverent, has a surprising amount of content and deep survival mechanics, and is absurdly difficult to put down. It's impossible to overlook just how shamelessly it takes ideas and designs from Pokemon. And it's got some unsurprising bugs and performance issues. But when you're riding on the back of a flying dragon while shooting a blue duck with an assault rifle, most of those blemishes wash away entirely. 
This is already one of my favorite survival games, and I'm incredibly excited to see how it evolves. For more, check out our reviews of Prince of Persia The Lost Crown and Turnip Boy Robs a Bank. And for everything else, stick with IGN.